they took the guns out and the next thing they said was, okay, we're gonna go into your car. And I told them, no, you guys don't have consent to go into my car. Let's just get into it. You are, you grew up in Los Angeles in South Central and you were a LAPD officer for three years. Yes. But you quit. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about the incident that led up to you quitting the department. Okay, so um, yeah, I started the uh, academy in uh, August 2019. Uh, after the academy, I ended up at West LA, which is near like the UCLA Brentwood area. Um, it's bordered by Santa Monica, Beverly Hills. It's a nice area, upscale area. I, I did a probation year there, so it's basically your first year out of the academy where you pretty much are still in training, you're learning what to do, and you know how to be a police officer. Um, after my probation year, I ended up in Southwest Division, which is pretty much in between uh, like Dorsey High School in the jungles and mm -hmm. USC. Uh, we also go from like 54th Street to uh, Adams Boulevard. So um, I was there for maybe about two years. And immediately I kind of, I saw like a, a shift in the, when I switched divisions from West LA to Southwest, I, I saw a shift in the energy that the officers were giving, you know, citizens, civilians particularly minorities, Blacks and Hispanics. Um, and it, for, for me, it was kind of, it was, it was rough trying to figure out like how to go about the situation. Obviously you, you'd hear stories and there's even some things that I've been through before I got into the LAPD. Um, and so there I was, you know, 22 years old, seeing some of these things firsthand. Um, I was kind of trying to figure out how to go about these situations. Um, August, 2022, I was filming a movie that I'm working on, um, it's unrelated to the LAPD. Uh, I was on an off day and we were almost done with the film day. Um, me and the sound guy, we had left one location and we had went back to my house. We were about to fil film two scenes at my house. The rest of the crew had got there a little bit before us and so there was no parking. So we had to park across the street. Uh, we arrived to the house maybe about 7.20 p.m. And we were sitting in the car talking, just chopping it up. I think we were talking about filming or something like that. Um, and after about a minute and a half, we finally got up to get out of the car. And as I get up and open my door, I see uh, three officers uh, parked right behind us, kind of parallel, getting out of their vehicle. And me being a police officer, I understand, like, okay, they're about to initiate a traffic stop. They were looking at us. Um, they were behind the door, so I didn't see if they had their hands on their guns. but. I think that's, I mean, that's the protocol usually when you're about to do a traffic stop. Um, so I immediately put my hands up, uh, told them I was a police officer. I had my ID and my, uh, my uh, firearms on me, which I'm allowed to carry as a police, or I was allowed to carry as a police officer. Um, and so they told me, uh, okay, just get up against the fence. And so I went with protocol. Um, I was a police officer, but at the end of the day, I'm a black man with guns. So I went with protocol um, and I, I got up against the fence. They handcuffed me and my passenger. Um, and the next thing they said, oh, they cuffed me. They took the guns out. And the next thing they said was, okay, we're gonna go into your car. And I told them, no, you guys don't have consent to go into my car. At that point, I, well, I, I didn't do anything wrong throughout the night, but for me, it's like, why are you guys detaining me? I just, you know, I have my gun on me, but I told you I'm a police officer. All you have to do is check my ID. Um, and they were just like, oh, you know, we, we just wanna go in the car and make sure you got nothing else in there. Um, and then my passenger, he had a bag that when he saw them, he put it back in the car. So they were asking him about his bag. Um, and I told him, just don't talk to them because you, they told me that they stopped me for tinted windows. If you stop the driver for tinted windows, then you shouldn't even be talking to the passenger. He has nothing to say. He shouldn't even be detained right now. He, he hasn't been, he hasn't committed any crime. He hasn't been suspected of any crime. So why has he been detained? Um, and they start telling me, oh, you're a police officer. You shouldn't be telling him not to talk to us. And um, I told I said, you gave him your name, right? He said, yeah, I said, that's it then. They don't need nothing else from you. Like they, they wanted to get into, oh, where are you from? Or this and that, and there's, there's no need for you to talk to them, bro. Uh, they're gonna give me a ticket for tenant windows, then we will let that be that. Um, so after the first five minutes um, of them pretty much going back and forth for me about why they stopped me and if they could go into my car, they finally checked my ID. And my police ID is right under my, uh, my driver's license, so the officer went to pull out my driver's license and he saw that I had my police ID right under it. And um, he was behind me. I kind of like looked at him and I saw him kind of like do a double take as if he didn't want to, he didn't want to see it or he didn't want to believe that I actually had a police ID on me. And so um, after that, I, I started to ask him, okay, you see my police ID now, why am I still in cuffs? And they went to start saying, oh, uh, we can't verify that you're an officer. 
people quit and keep badges or, or make fake badges. He said this happens all the time. I've never heard of anything like that happening in my life. I've been stopped by CHP before. As a police officer, I showed him my badge and he said, all right, you're good to go. How did so, it make you feel in that moment um, when they're telling you that they can't verify that you're a police officer? Um, I felt betrayed. At that moment, I, I pretty much knew that, that, that my time in LAPD was done. In that moment? In that moment, I knew that it was done. Uh, I started to t ask them to just uh, request the sergeants um, because I, for me, I wasn't going to allow them to go into my car under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. But if they were going to do it illegally, we, was gonna, we were going to at least have sergeants out there. Um, so, I, you know, after they took about another 15 minutes saying that, then I started to ask them, OK, can we just get some sergeants out here? I understand where this is going. And, you know, this is probably the end of the line for me. Um, so, yeah, it, it felt uh, I, I kind of felt betrayed because for me, it's like I've worked so hard like for all, all my all my life pretty much to stay out of trouble um i had two brothers that passed away two of my like like we had the same father they passed away a couple of years before i got into lapd for, so for me to shift through all these things and still get the same credentials that you guys have and for you guys to treat me like this because of the color of my skin i, I felt uh betrayed it, it was it was it was pretty traumatizing <laughs>